Welcome back to Vegas Live with Nina, and you know who I am. I'm Nina de Verde Rosa, and I'm the host of this program that is actually filmed out of uh, Quirky Minds Media Studios. Absolutely amazing. And I have Devon, I have Debbie and Walk Smith with me. Um, and we're going to be talking about something which I've, I'm actually fascinated about because when I, I think about coral, um, which is what they both do, but we're going to get into it obviously a little bit more. I think about my mother, and she had this incredible um, coral necklace, and it was one of her very, very favorites, and she absolutely loved it. And it never at that time as a little girl didn't know much about you know coral, and then um, recently I found out that coral was disappearing from the reefs, and I didn't. I found out how it grows and how one little seed is left, and that can multiply. And, so tell yeah. me the story. It's a well, fascinating I'll, story you have. What you what you said about coral disappearing uh, is basically true. Uh, what's happening around the world due to global warming and human impact um, is that the coral reefs are disappearing because um, corals depend on uh, the temperature of the water of to the stay water. alive. Yes. Yeah. And the water is warming up. Yeah. And that's not good news for the coral. No. So. Um, well, Deborah and I uh, moved our young girls uh, in 1989 uh, to the South Pacific because I loved coral. I was in the pet industry, and um, I supplied um, tropical fish and so forth to the aquariums around the world. Really? From Los oh, Angeles. How beautiful. And uh, I had an opportunity to expand what I did and take it to the source. Uh, so we, the first place we moved in 1989 was the Kingdom of Tonga. Now, the Kingdom of Tonga... I'm going to find where the Kingdom of Tonga is now. <laughs> <laughs> we had a king, and we had the whole oh, royal right. family, mm -hmm. and it was the, the last remaining monarch in the Pacific. In the um, Pacific. And actually, the king, uh, interesting side story, was is in the Guinness Book of World Records of being <laughs> the heavy, Libya, uh, he heaviest monarch that lived on Earth. Yeah. Oh really? So, yeah. Oh so yes, he was quite large. So he liked to eat. Oh, he they liked all to eat. Do. Yes, yeah. he obviously didn't eat much fish because fish is not fattening, but it could be, yeah. right? <laughs> a lot of the root crops. Depends. It depends how you cook it uh, and the rest of the yeah. stuff that goes with it. Right. The one fascinating story. So that's where you moved, and, and well, with we your two girls. And then um, seven years later, in 1995, uh, we got an invitation from the Fiji government to come over and, and uh, establish our business there. And um, they invited you to come to their yes. right. island. Yes, to, to Fiji. Yeah. To Fiji. Fiji has 380 islands. 300 so Fiji, so this is one of the islands. Right. Because right. we always think out. of the F Fiji islands, don't we? Right. Yeah, that's how we talk about them, yes. Right. Fiji has about a million people and oh. uh, 380 islands. So yeah, there you it's go. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty big... I don't think people realize that how many islands that they, they have. A lot of them not inhabited. No, no, I'm sure, yeah, but there's a lot of them are, too. Right. Yeah. A few. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, that, that comes up a lot when pe people ask me. So um, when we were there, uh, we, had, we had a cyclone uh, in the first year that we were living there, uh -oh. which damaged the reef, tore it all to bits, and um, we, we were working the reef every day because mm -hmm. we would go out in the water every day to do our work, yeah. and we noticed that coral reef was gone. It was smashed to bits, laying in pieces on the sand. So we thought this was pretty devastating and, and just really shocking Well, absolutely, yes. Yeah. Right. yeah, because this is your business, but also it's a yeah. living business. I mean, the coral is alive. Right, right. it's alive. Yeah. It's a colony of living animals. Correct. So what, we, um, what happened is about a month later, um, a customer of ours came to visit us and we took them out to the reef to show them the damage that the cyclone did but, uh, and everything. Yeah, yeah. And Deb and I and, and he are swimming around. And we're looking at the coral that was broken and we noticed that it was starting to grow, laying in the sand. Just like grass, new grass. New grass. Yeah. New grass. New and it found and growing the towards the sun. And it was gr trying to, so it rooted itself yes. into the sand. It, it Does it root itself? It doesn't no, really it root itself. itself. It attaches itself, doesn't no, it? No, it was just laying there. Just laying there. Yeah, and when I looked at that, I picked it up and I looked at it, and I could see that it was this much longer now, because um, you, know, you could see the new growth. Yeah. 
I said, if this happens, we can we can farm this stuff. We can grow it um, by mm. by cutting little pieces off of big 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 pieces, pieces that that right. could have been dead but weren't dead. But now you realize that obviously mm. probably a lot of it wasn't dead. Well, it was growing. The first uh, the first commercial coral farm in the world was born in Fiji. In 1998. Coral farm. Have you ever had? I mean, we've had a shrimp farm and all different farms. Salmon farm. Salmon farms, but yeah. coral. But you can farm the ocean. You can you farm, farm coral. You can farm coral, so it'll never be lost. We grow over 60,000 pieces a year. And you do now. Have, yeah, when we have been since 1998. Yeah. We've actually replaced the reef with millions of pieces of coral. And one of the things to remember is that when you plant a new coral um, from a fragment. It already thinks it's an adult because it's just a piece of a bigger one. Okay. So when that gets planted, um, it go comes to maturity very fast. So they grow so very fast. It not only grows, but, but every it year, every year it spores and it, it, it spawns and has babies. Is this why, when you know you have a little piece of coral, is this why you know you see a little piece of coral, then you also see a big piece of coral, and is that why? Because it expands so so rapidly. It, it grows about 15 to 17 centimeters a year. Depending upon the type. The Some type are very fast growing. They grow like the, a weed. And you know, weeds grow slow. fast, yes, because you go to your garden, the weed comes up, and the next day it's twice the size. Correct. Um, but there's different colors of coral, right? Many. Oh, yeah. And different species. And different Many species. Because we species. all think of coral as being this kind of the coral color, which is sort of the orangey comes in reds and blues and greens and pinks and yellows. Um, we have many, this is, um, this to give you an idea, um, this is our NGO that we started. Um, okay, this is what is starting. Oh! And, and so this is the coral fragments that are grown on the base. So you don't think of these, there's the yellow and then there's the pink, pink and then there's purple. The, the purple? Right. Oh so we goodness. only target the fastest growing species. Why? Because it's more successful. Okay. And it, it means um, faster growth on, on the reef it's, itself. Yeah. So we have actually gone to areas where there was nothing but a sandy bottom. Okay. And rocks. And, and is, is that under the water? It's underwater. Yes. Uh, all underwater. All underwater. Okay. Hundred percent. And now it is it is a coral reef that stands up about three to four feet high, and the village is actually gets their food from that reef that was nothing but a, a bare sandy bottom. Because the fish come back. Yeah. So you, you actually regrew this. Now, the story I was going to mention was in Australia, all the coral reefs that have been destroyed and they've mm. all died. Quite a few of them. Yeah. And now they're trying to bring them back again. That's what the story I had was. And, there, and I was fascinated by this story because I was learning because you could see the beautiful corals and then all of a sudden it was bare, nothing. And then you saw people were trying to grow it back again. You see, it's little t just what you were talking about, right. little things growing. Regenerate it. They're regenerating it. Right. And well, that wasn't through the hurricane, though. That was probably through the through warm the coral water. Bleaching. Climate change. What climate happens change. is cor coral has a symbiotic algae that grows underneath the tissue. Okay. And that symbiotic algae is called um, zoanthelia. So when the water gets too warm, the zoanthelia leaves well, the coral and goes off on it, you know, yeah. goes off and dies. Yeah. That's the food source for the coral. The coral grows its own garden right the underneath the tissue. So when, when, Survival. <laughs> when, when you hear the word bleaching, it refers to the coral looks white, like it's been dipped in bleach. Yes. And the reason for that is the zoanthelia is what gives the coral its color. Oh. And when it's gone, you're actually looking at a skeleton through the tissue. Like a bag of bones. Right. A bag of coral. Dead. Well, it's, it's, calcium. it's still alive for a couple of weeks. So now this is calcium. Yes. Yeah. I am learning a tremendous amount. I, th I, I thought I knew a little bit, but obviously, you know, a little bit of knowledge is very dangerous. But, <laughs> and, oh, yeah, it's always very dangerous. But so you've actually, so are you in the Fijis still, or you are not? Yeah. No, we're still in Fiji. We're still there. You're still there, and you still have your farm there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, Farms. Uh, several. Uh, farm. You have several farms several. there. Uh, you have them on all different islands, or just on one island? On different islands. So we have about seven sites altogether. Seven sites. Now, how do you keep up with this? There's only the two of you. We have staff. 
You know, we have you know, a lot of employees. You have a lot of employees that... At, at, in our heyday, we, we, we employed over 200 people. Um, with COVID right now, um, things have changed. Tom, yeah, and, yeah, um, and the government actually um, only allows our boats to go out so many days a week. And, you know, um, we're trying to get all our divers vaccinated. They okay. have a different attitude in Fiji about the vaccination. Yeah, I can imagine, yeah. yeah. So um, we finally appealed to them all, and, and, and we were successful in getting everybody. So what is your goal right now? In other words, well, I guess I'm asking, how can we help? Vegas Live with Neilan, as you know, is a, a platform where we can get people to understand other people and how we can help them and get them out there and do things for them. So how can we can help by getting you on our show, but what is your next move now? How can we help? Well, the AIDS site, um, which is ADE, yes. uh, stands for Aquaculture Development for the Environment. Okay. Our site is um, AID Project. Okay. A D E project. Dot org. Dot org. Org. Mm. org means it's a foundation. Right. Yes. It is, and we're registered both here in the states and in Fiji. Okay. As an NGO, what they call non-government. Yeah, non-government. Yeah. Right. And um, it's, it's it's a legal nonprofit. If you go to that site, you, there's very easy ways to, to donate. To donate and and, 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 to and help, help you. Help the cause. Um, we've raised. Um, uh, quite a bit of money uh, so far, but it's nowhere near enough. I think we've raised some, somewhere around 115000 through outside donations. Well, that's good. That's a good and thing, but it's not enough. It, it's yeah. not enough. This year, we, uh, we put a program out, a proposal out to the government that we can grow one million corals in one year. Okay. And we can because we've already got the technology. Well, yes, yeah. you've been doing this we for years. You know exactly yeah. what yeah. you're doing. We just have I mean, to scale up on, what we're hello. doing. <laughs> right, right. And the, the other way is... Um, yeah, I've noticed you've got this lovely, colorful-looking well, book. we decided to uh, write... Uh, I had an idea about uh, these characters called the Bula Buddies. The Bula Buddies. How'd you get that name? Bula means hello. Okay. In Fiji. It means many things, like okay. aloha. Aloha, okay. Right. So bula is, is bula. a wonderful greeting. It's, if it's you sneeze, they'll say bula, bula. to you. <laughs> bula. I love it. Bula bula and is a very bula. warm greeting. It's a very warm. So when someone says bula bula to you, oh, yeah. next time I'll bow. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, these are, these, it's centered around four uh, underwater heroes. Okay. Who are going to help save the reef. Okay, we're going to save the reef. They notice something's going, going on. And, um, well, I know because I, I I listen to the program, and it's right. definitely disappearing. So right. we need people out there, and this is what this is. Isn't that amazing? Who, and who you did you design this? Yes. Or yes. You designed. Created it. He. We had an uh, outside artist do the graphic. Well, yes. He wrote the story. Yeah, but you wrote the story and had well, the I idea. Yes. Yeah. The now you created and you created the character. Yes. And see this one. This is a little. This is a, This looks like a, a spider, lobster. but it looks like a coral. It's got all these little things, look. Looks like mm -hmm. there, see, look, it matches. Love it. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So it's for children, to, so they can learn about the underwater, and they can also learn about the superheroes, and, and learn about, there's so many, so many people don't get wet, so many people don't understand what's under the water, so it's another no. way of being able to educate. Yes. I, I happen to like under the water. I'm, I'm not keen on swimming anymore now, but I happen to like under the water, and I think, but I think it's fascinating with the corals, and what now you've explained it even more. Right. Um, I'm even more interested because I, when I was listening to it, and I thought, well, that can't die. They can't have, because apparently the ones in Australia, these reefs were absolutely amazing, and I don't know if you, you probably know of them, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Well, we know a lot about the, what's happening in Australia. We know a lot of the people there, and um, there isn't um, a, a place in the world that's tropical, even subtropical, that has a coral reef that isn't, isn't doing this activity yeah. in some way, shape, or form yeah. today. Yeah. And it all started in 1998 in Fiji. In 1998 in Fiji. That's the episode. And that's where you started yeah. it. So you started the farming of it, which took it out of the water. Well, not, well, it took it out of the sea, but it made it into a farm, right? Farm under the water. But it's still under the water. Right. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Because right. yes. coral can't grow unless it's under the water, correct? Right. Yeah, yeah. So it thrives on that as well as it's stuff underneath. What did you call that again? The substrate. There you go. <laughs> there you go. It's kind of loose rubble. Yeah, loose rubble. Yeah. Because, because you have a, a bit about 
in the ocean as well. You have like sand, you have yes. rubble, you have mud, you have everything. Everything yeah. grows in different patches. Yeah, and that's what yeah. they kind of look for in the opera. Right. How, how does it get the different colors? Is that through? It's the zumazelli algae that grows. Zumazelli. And they'll, they'll um, exhibit different colorations. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's bred. So when the algae is living under this coral, um, it will look the pink or the purple that that coral normally yeah. looks because it grows a certain kind of zoonotelium. Yeah, I think that that's color. amazing. Well, I learned some. Well, I learned a lot actually. Um, how can we help? What is your message you'd like to give out there on to reach the people that are in Bombola and also in the coral and Hackle? If, if they visit message? the site, they'll see um, the site is very interesting. Okay. And it has a lot of videos and movies. And, and that, that's the that, adeproject.com. Dot org. Dot org. Sorry. Dot org. Dot org. O -R -G. It's very informative. Yes. Yeah. And right. there's a lot of very famous scientists that um, are on our board. Um, the founder of Reef Check. Okay. Um, the head curator of the Atlanta Aquarium at the Waikiki Aquarium many years ago. Okay. Um, that Back and, the back and understand what you're understands doing. understands the science part of what, we, what we're we doing. Yeah, but you two are both, uh, Deb and Walt Smith, are both very well known all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, it might not be in the music industry, but if you're wearing a necklace that is coral, then it would be in the music industry, or earrings dangling around here, <laughs> because that's what they use a lot of it for. What is it mainly, um, mainly used for, actually? For coral? Yeah. Cor coral um, started out... Um, it doesn't have any uh, real value in, in the manufacturing world, uh, but it's for the aquariums and public aquariums and for education. Educational. That's yeah. that's uh, why it's used. Yeah. Um, that's people the main now, I, I, I often say, um, when I got into this industry um, back in 1972, um, there was um, there was no coral in, in aquariums because they couldn't keep them alive, and as technology started to advance for aquariums. Uh, back in, uh, right about the time we moved to Tonga, mm -hmm. um, the technology was available to start keeping coral alive. So that's where I started exporting mm -hmm. live coral for aquariums, and people were successful. So I often say, um, you can now have a living coral reef in your living room right next to the TV. Because they probably always think of it as yeah. just a thing that's not living. They right. always think no, it's, it's, it's just a sort of thing. Alive. It's very much alive. And that's people grow coral on their that's own the stuff. Yeah, that's the most beautiful part about it. It's, it's a living creature. It yeah. is, it's there. And they actually and share coral. Yeah, they share coral. Yeah. Just like, you know, sharing a garden. Like yes. uh, it's, it's gardening under the water. So yes. there's a lot of people that share their cuttings. And I have this species from here and, and this. Then and then I'll give this to you. Yeah, you it, give it's like trading share. stamps or trading coins. And then they wait till that grows. That grows up. They'll cut pieces like cut a little off. piece off and give it to the friend yeah. of those. Right. That must be fascinating to, to do that and then watching it grow. Right. That must be the fascinating part. Well, it, it is. Yeah, it is. Just watching it all grow up and everything else. So they all start like everybody else. It all starts as a baby. Right, <laughs> right. It's all as a baby, which is a baby is a seed. Uh, There's no escaping nature. No, right. you can't escape yeah. nature, right. can you? And so we're seeking donations. Okay. So, you um, so we can continue on with this NGO and keep spreading the message and bring in volunteers and also help the Fijian communities. Yes. It's, it's gender equality for the, for the women. It's for uh, sustainability for their food source. It's education uh, for the children, for the schools. But it's also, you employ a lot of people, so and it's, it's also giving other people jobs. Right. And, 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 and tourism and when it comes tourism. back. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you must have seen a big drop in that. Oh. 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 Wow. Oh. Yeah. Um, Here you can see um, where the women are involved. Women see are that? really good at help planting the corals. See, there you go. That, there it all is. So get involved, become part of, um, of the water world. Is that what I call it? Yeah, sure. We call it the water world because um, they are living creatures there. I know we take it for granted. We go and swim. We, you know, we go to all these different uh, islands and different places for our vacations, and um, we kind of take it for granted that you know this is this is there and it's always there. But there's people like Wart and Deb that um, actually out there keeping it all alive, and you really are keeping it alive mm. because you're growing it and everything and else and spreading the message and spreading that the you message. can be done, that you can grow coral. You can grow coral, and it grows and it regenerates. See.
You could have a whole it's house full of coal. It's not doom and gloom. Yeah. <laughs> it's not doom and gloom. No. Yeah. If you consider um, how many corals we planted every year and the fact that every year they spawn in October, November is the spawning season. A okay. full moon. And a full moon. Uh, oh, a, a full, full moon, moon does many things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this full moon cultivates many things. <laughs> but if you consider how exponentially that has grown, yes, and how many pieces are in the water now, based on those original sixty thousand. Yeah. And if we all get out there, and we help a little bit. You don't have to help much. If you can't help, you know, feeling it, touching it, growing it, then financially you can help, yeah. and you can always say that you know. Well, I was part of that, and I helped, right. it, and I think that's beautiful. Well, for a dollar, it helps plant one piece of coral. Oh, so you can have a dollar? For a coral. Do you, and you have that on your website? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so for a dollar on the website, it's, all it is is just put your credit card number in there, a dollar, and you grow. Now, do they get a photograph of that? They get a certificate. They get a certificate. And um, at the different levels, if there's a very large donation, there'll be GPS coordinates. So they have all lot different, lots right. of different corals and different things going. You know where your corals growing. You right. know where it's growing, how it's growing, and when yeah. it's growing. Yeah. We're, awesome. We're, we're trying to work out a program now where we can actually photograph the coral being planted. Yes. And then we can Instagram them back or s send them back electronically. Oh, that would be amazing because with the internet and everything Here's, you can do, with yeah. the Zoom thing you can do all that and everything else and right. send it to them. It's just COVID gotten away a little bit of some of our things. That's all right. We're, we're back again. And if it comes back again, we'll fi figure something else out because that's human beings are just the same. You know, we keep growing, we keep doing, we keep yeah. moving forward in our way. And then the underwater world does it their way. And that's what we have to understand. Um, Deb and Walt, well, thank you very thank much you. for coming thank on. Amazing. We learned an awful lot about it. Don't forget to get your donation. And that's going to go to adeprojects.org. We shall be right back um, with our next guest. Take care. It's Vegas Live with Nina. Thank you. If you enjoy the last show we just did and all the other shows, don't forget to subscribe Vegas Live with Nina on YouTube. We've got plenty more coming up and our guests are amazing. So don't forget to subscribe. We'll be right back. Vegas Live with Nina.